a chance they're wrong. Yeah, I think that I think it may pick up before then. You think the U.S. economy will pick up? Yeah, before the U.S. Then? economy is. I think it. Well, it's been picking up ever since the summer of 2009, right up to last month. I mean, I I I, I see figures on 70 plus businesses. What is unusual about this is we had a huge recession caused in large part by a housing bubble. I mean, you had you have 67 percent of the people in the United States own their own homes, roughly. Right. And those people who had a $22 trillion asset at the peak saw its value shrink dramatically. That, that's affecting two-thirds of the households in the United States. That had that incredible impact on the economy. And we won't come back big time uh, until we've worked off the excess inventory that was created during our binge on housing uh, a few years back. We are, we are making progress on that every day, every week, every month. I mean, we are producing less houses than we are households. Except household formation has to increase beyond, beyond the place housing construction. Housing construction, no, no, housing. And, that, and that's been happening for a couple of years, and it's exactly what should happen. Uh, now, I actually read some article the other day by people talking about blowing up a few houses or something. If you blew up a, a million houses, you'd probably be in balance now. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. But, and if you started having households being formed by 12-year-olds, you, 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 you could speed up household formation. But we're not going to have that either. But we are going to have households being formed. That's baked into the demographic pie. You are saying that the, what's wrong with the American economic growth picture right now is housing and construction right. and, and... Every one of our businesses, virtually, of our 70-some businesses, are doing better quarter by quarter by quarter, except those tied to housing. But housing, and things like housing that. Housing is way bigger than construction workers. I, unemployment will fall significantly, in my view, when we get back up to a million. Housing starts it. Because it won't just be construction workers. It will be our carpet workers, where we've laid off 6,000 people. It will be our brick workers. And it, go up and down the line. So uh, the big recovery, we've recovered on corporate profits. We've recovered in terms of of getting the banks back in shape. Banks are in good shape now. We've recovered in all kinds of areas. Corporate America is doing fine in most areas. It's not doing fine in things tied to residential construction. That won't come back until we work off the excess inventory. But the inventory is not as, the, the, the amount of excess inventory is not as high as a lot of people think in my judgment. And that's why I say it could be before two, mid-2013. Mid uh, going down to 8% or something? I think it go, I think if construct, when, when Home construction is a million units or more running at that rate. I think we'll be at 7% or below. You have a, bit, a bet with Peter Orzog, the former director of the Office of Management and Budget? Yeah, but I'm talking settlement with him. <laughs> <laughs> what was the bet? The bet, the bet was on, by election time, that it would be down to 7.3%. And I thought, I thought housing construction would come back by that point. Yeah. And I may be wrong. I may be right. But, yeah. I, uh, but when I will guarantee you, when housing construction gets back to a million units, and it can go beyond that. I right, mean, it right, could easily right, be right. a million, too. Uh, we will have, unemployment will fall dramatically. To 6% at some point? Well, yeah, certainly below 7. Below, well, close yeah, to 6. Yeah. By, 20, by 2013. Oh, I, 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 think, I think it's likely to happen. The Federal Reserve <laughs> disagrees with me, yeah. and Bernanke's a lot smarter guy about that than I am. But, but I, we are working it off. I mean, we have, we have never had this low a level relative to population right. for as long as I know the figures on. I mean, this, this is a huge correction of a bubble that popped. And, and what is necessary to take place between, over the next two years in order to increase household formation and decrease the amount of construction? Well, we're doing pretty well on the decrease of construction. Right. Uh, we've, we have, we've not done... Demand is a factor in that. Demand's a factor. And we artificially gave it a little uh, boost when we went with the, uh, the, the credit, you know, year to go on, 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 on purchase of homes. I think it's a mistake to try and, uh, uh, try and front end it. I mean, it, it just delays the eventual recovery. You, if you've got an excess of something, if, if I've got too many purple dresses and I run a dress yeah. shop, I get rid of those purple dresses, and, and then I can start all over again with the dresses that you know, the people want. Yeah. And I, I mark them down to whatever it takes. You, know, you could... You could, you, could have, you could have a bunch of rich immigrants come in and they'd all need houses, for example. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to change your immigration policy so that you let 500,000 families in but they had to have a significant net worth and everything, it, 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 you'd solve things very quickly. But naturally, it's being solved. Capitalism is solving this. What we're fortunate in is Japan has a declining population. I mean, if they get an excess of something, it isn't going to get worked off. We have households being formed every day. I've got a 
grandson getting married <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> so we're, we're forming them all the time. And, and we're forming them a lot faster than we're building homes. And we have an economy that's based on domestic demand? Sure. Yeah. Whereas China was trying to shift around from an export demand to a, yeah, to yeah. a domestic demand. Yeah, they'll be a strong exporter for a long time. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you look at economic growth, first there's a job question, but then there's also the rate of economic growth, the increase in GDP. How do you see that? I think it'll be, I think it'll be very good over time. I mean, I, I, we have... We have the same things that have been working for us for 200 plus years. We've, you know, we've, we, we, Charlie, I was born on August 30th, 1930. That was the high day of the Dow industrials in that year. It was at 242. They'd come back. People right. thought that they didn't think that we were going into a recession. What happened the next couple of years? You know, at 4,000 banks closed. The Dow went to 41. That's like the present Dow going to 2,000. You know, my dad lost his job. We had the dust bowl here and everything. We're living six times better than then now. The American system works. It works terrifically, and and uh, it has it has occasional uh, recessions. I mean, we've had probably had 15 of them since the country was formed, and this was a particularly bad one because we had a bubble in the biggest asset around for the American public. You have made the point that I guess it was in 1779 or somewhere right about then. Uh, that the Chinese population was like 290 million. Yeah, 290 million. The American population was about 4, 4 million. million, and Europe's was about 50 million. Yeah. And look what happened. Look what happened. And we weren't smarter. We didn't work harder. We didn't have greater natural resources. We just had a system that worked, and they've been smart enough to catch on. Okay, but, but there are interesting things that are at work as well. The demographics are at work. So they have more domestic demand possibilities in China because of their population, or in India because of their population, or in Brazil and places like that. Some will argue that it's going to be a much more competitive environment for the United States. While we may have a system, other people are learning from our system, and they also have some built-in advantages that we don't have. Yeah, they've gotten, they've gotten smarter about things. I mean, yeah. they, if you go back 50 years in China, the Chinese were just as smart then. They worked just as hard, but they weren't getting results. And now they're, they're getting incredible results. They, they, they picked up on the system, but that's not bad for us. I mean, we do not, the world isn't a zero sum game at all. We want the rest of the world to prosper. We'll sell them a lot of things, you know. Most people don't realize it, but our exports as a percentage of GDP have doubled in the last 40 years. You know, we have become better at exporting things, but just we like to import yeah. a lot better. Yeah, but for a long time you've been arguing against the current, uh, the, the, uh, current deficit issue. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we have to, we have to, we have to come to grips with that. Yeah, the, we have to come to grips with the trade imbalance. And, right. we, and, and I wrote an article some years ago about one suggestion for doing it. But we cannot continuously run large current account deficits over time. Mm. Two big debates coming up in terms of, of this country and a political season. One is about taxes, uh, which you are speaking to in this piece, basically saying the rich ought to pay more. The other is the role of government. Um, a how do you see that debate? Well, I think, I think if we get back on more or less the formula we had, which was getting 18 and a half or 19 percent of our revenues from taxes, we can spend 21 percent then. We can run a deficit of a couple percent of GDP on average over time because our, our country will grow and we have a lot more debt paying capacity than we had back in 1790. Just like I've got more debt paying capacity than I had 50 years ago. So as your income grows, your population grows, your wealth grows, you can handle more debt, but you can't let it keep increasing as a percentage of your income or wealth, and which is what we've been doing like, you know, like crazy lately. So I don't mind a couple percentage point gap 18 and a half or 19 on revenues, 21 or thereabouts on expenditure. But that means we have to hit both sides and we can't put ourselves on a trajectory that takes the expenditure side up automatically as the years pass, which is what we've done with entitlements. Do we need another stimulus program? Well, we've got, a, we have the, we've got the biggest stimulus program the world's seen virtually going on right now. It's very, that debate is really, gotten somewhat ridiculous in my view because stimulus, fiscal stimulus is when the government spends a lot more than it's taking right. in. So the deficit is our stimulus. The deficit is our stimulus. You can, you can say a bridge someplace is part of that act. You can say cutting taxes is part of it, as was the case in the, our stimulus act. But the stimulus is the government pouring more money out than it's taking in. And we have a, a stimulus going on that's 10 percent of GDP, which we haven't seen since World War II. Uh, so we have a huge stimulus going on. Nobody wants to call it a stimulus because that's gotten to be a dirty word. But we have a big stimulus. We do, in my view, 
whether we have a 10% of GDP uh, deficit, right. which is a huge stimulus, or a 12 or an 8 doesn't make much difference. I, I think that we've pushed monetary policy to the limit, we've pushed fiscal policy to the limit, but fortunately, the most important thing in terms of this country ever coming out of recessions has been the natural workings of capitalism, and I think you've seen that the last couple and, of years. And you are saying at this table this day, you do not see the likelihood of a double-dip recession because the only thing that needs to happen to make this economy as strong as it is is new construction. Yeah, I, I, would, I would market say, I would say there's, only, there's only two things that could cause me to be wrong on that, in my view, and, and, other, and I, th I don't think the, either one. is people lose so much faith in government to handle things that they that they just they they talk themselves into a huge funk in this country and the second thing could be if somehow the troubles of Europe spilled over here. Confidence is an important thing. Sure it is. And there was a damage to confidence based on what happened in Washington. Charlie, I own stock in a lot of companies. If I get upset about the management, you know, what they're doing, do I lose confidence? Yes. Do I feel different about investing with them? Yes. I mean, I mean, you you want to have you've got to have confidence in your leaders. I mean, we went into World War II with confidence in our leaders. I, you know, I mean, that, it's vital. It looked like we were losing the war for six months, but we never lost confidence in our in our leaders. And it's we you have to believe in them, and they have to give you reason to believe in them. Help me understand now what the danger is that we face if things don't happen as well. If Washington cannot get back on track, maintain the confidence of, of the American people, and at the same time make the right decisions. Because if that super committee doesn't do the right thing... That's why I'm telling them to do the right, right. thing. Yeah. With that, Bernanke, that's why you tell them... The, you, this is directed this is, in part to that super committee absolutely. to say, look, no, you've got to look at taxes if, really strongly. Here. If I can pick 12 readers for it, <laughs> they're the ones. No, if you go back to S September of 2008, I mean, you had a, a month when everything was falling apart. Freddie, Fannie, hey, right. you, you name it. What our leaders were saying to us then, the, the key players, they were saying, we'll do whatever it takes. And I believed, I knew they had the power to do whatever it took, and then I believed they would do it. Now, the problem about government now is that if they come out and get on the Sunday talk shows and say, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, people don't believe them. You know, I mean, they, 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 they've got to see action. And, and here they see something like the uh, raising the deficit limit used as a hostage uh, for something so vital importance to the United States. I mean, if you can use it as a hostage in terms of spending, you can use it as a hostage on, on funding education or anything else. I mean, it isn't limited to that. If, if you've got something that comes up like that, people do not want to see the instruments of government used as weapons. Uh, that, you know, the, the idea of the old idea of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the law, that it's a shield, not a sword. I mean, we... The minorities become a sword in this respect. And I don't blame this on Speaker Boehner. I, I think I, I think if he'd you're talking about members of the Tea Party and, and the, the people that said the yeah, people the when he went back to him said Republican. said to him, you know, you're not going to have our support <laughs> if you go in there and bend an inch on this. Uh, they said throw away the steering wheel. You have also said that you guarantee that there was one way to get people to vote differently <laughs> on this, which yeah. is if in fact if you say unless you reduce the deficit to three percent of GDP, three percent of GDP. And it's now about 10 percent. Right. Unless you reduce it, then you are not eligible for re-election. Yeah. If you had that facing them, you'd get a decision about these issues right away. Tomorrow. But that's it's still tongue-in-cheek, though, Charlie, because if you, during a huge recession like we had, during an all-out wartime period, you don't want them operating with 3 percent of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you need larger deficits. But you certainly need something a little less than that on average over time. But I, I just use it to illustrate that this is a world of incentives. Right. And we work on it.